Hi everyone, Glamma here. Welcome back to Made with Love by Glamma, where everything here is always made and taught by me with love. First, I want to thank you for watching that commercial and ad at the beginning of the video. I appreciate it. Yay! <laughs> when you don't hit the skip ad button, it helps me out to continue to bring these tutorials to you for free. So yay! Thank you! Um, so yeah, we're going to make a football beanie today. Yay! And as you saw in the thumbnail picture, it can be for guys or gals. Before we go any further, I wanted to let you know the nail polish color of the day. This is the name of it. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I got it in either my Ipsy bag or my Beauty Box 5 bag. Um, but this is the name of it. It's called Mr. Pookies. Isn't that an adorable name? <laughs> and I did a little football, little um, nail art there. I know it's a little funny looking football because my nails are so short. So it looks like a fat little football, huh? No deflate gate here. <laughs> and the white for the... Um, little seams and everything I used this one that my friend got me from Norway her name is Lily so thank you Lily came in handy so yeah that's the color of the day oh and I want to thank my son Daniel for giving me this football this it's a little mini football that um, I always hold when we're watching the Seahawks game I'm a Seattle Seahawks gal Woohoo! <laughs> Because when I uh, first started learning about football and loving football, I was living up in Washington State, although now I'm living in Texas. But yeah, and we even had a football party, and it was awesome! And I gave everyone these little football whistles, and now I keep this one to this day. And you should hear me during the games. I'm yelling, and I'm going like this. <laughs> Only I do it louder. <laughs> but yeah definitely our family is a football fanatic family <laughs> we also love to watch the spurs basketball game so i know that's a little weird we're um seattle seahawks football and san antonio texas spurs basketball <laughs> family brown yarn white yarn A pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and a stitch marker. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I know this is a really hard color to see, but I wanted to use brown so that it was authentic football looking. <laughs> so I apologize if it's hard to see, but I'll try to get as close as I can. Don't as I can okay. All right, so we're gonna get started with a magic ring to make a magic ring go around just like you're making a slip stitch pick up that back thread and with this finger right here bring up that yarn and pull it through the loop okay alrighty alright now let's chain two more one two and I think I'm gonna leave it at that I'm gonna use that one little loop as if it was a chain okay all right, so now what I want you to do, you can go ahead and make the ring a little smaller. It'll make it more manageable if you make it a little smaller. Um, the reason I like using magic rings is because you can close it completely up and no air will get in to the top of your head there. So yarn over and we're going to make 12 double crochets into the ring. Okay, so yarn over, go through, pick up a loop, yarn over go through two, yarn over, go through two. All right, so do that until you have 12 double crochets into this magic ring. So you'll have 12 double crochets plus the chain, okay? That chain is going to act as our filler so that there's not a big gap um, when we do each round, okay? All righty. So keep on doing this and I'll meet you back at the other end. Okay, so I've got my 12 double crochets in there and I'm going to pull on this tail. I'm going to pull it tight. See? No hole. <laughs> All right. So now what I want you to do is I want you to ignore that chain and I want you to slip stitch into that very first double crochet that you made, okay? 
All right, so you see that chain is acting as a filler, so there's not going to be a big gap. Because I hate it when you can actually see the seam of hats. You see, usually there's a big gap all along down the hat. So, all righty. Now let's do this again. Let's chain up three. One, two, three. And we're going to begin row two. So if you have a row counter, go ahead and click row two. All right. And now we're going to put another double crochet right into that space where we just slip stitched. Okay. And this chain is going to be our filler. So let's go ahead and put one more into here. So we've got the chain and we've got two double crochets coming out of that same space. And now we're going to put two double crochets in each stitch that we've made. Okay, so we should end up with 24 double crochets plus a chain. Alrighty. So just continue doing that and I'll meet you at the other end. So okay, I've got my second row completed. I put two double crochets into each stitch. If I hold it up close, you can see it better, can't you? Okay, so I've got 24 double crochets. I'm going to go up and I am going to slip stitch right there. Okay, and now I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. So we are going to yarn over and we're going to go right back in there and we're going to put two double crochets in there. Going to make an increase and then the next one we're just going to put one double crochet and then two in the next. And then one in the next. And that's the sequence that we're going to follow. Two, one, two, one, two, all the way till you get to the end. I'll meet you at the end. So I'm here at the end. I did two and then I did one and now I'm going to close it up. So we started off with two double crochets in the stitch and we ended up with one because we did two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one till the end. And so I forgot to tell you that was row three. So get your row counter if you didn't already. Alrighty. Um, and so now we are going to slip stitch. Okay. Hey, hashtag, are you up on my table again? And we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. And we're going to double. Oops, you almost fell, didn't you? Hashtag. <laughs> and we're going to do this again. We're going to make this an alternate increase row. But this time I'm going to start off with just one double crochet into this first stitch that we just chained out of. And then I'm going to put two double crochets. Don't ask me why. I just thought I would alternate it. <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want to. You can put two in there and one in there if you want. I just thought I would change it up a little. Okay, so I just, I did the chain, then I did a double crochet, and then I did two double crochets in the next stitch. And now I'm going to put one double crochet in this one and two into the next one. And you're just going to follow that along now. Okay, so we just did two. Then you're going to do one in there, two in there, one in there, two in there, all the way around. And I'll meet you back there. Okay, so I'm at the end of row four. And I've got one more stitch to go right here. And I'm going to put two double crochets in there. One and two. So usually if you start off with one and then two and then one, you usually end up with the opposite of what you started with. So here we started with one and we ended with two. Okay. And so I remembered why I like to do that. You know, in the other row I had started off with two and then in this one I started off with one because I don't like it to look too bunched up. If I was to put two there and then two there, I just think it would look too bunched up. So, I mean, that's just my reasoning, but you can do what you like. <laughs> so now I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to chain three, one, two and three. I wanted to show you um, hashtag. She's so adorable. <laughs> She's sleeping right there. Yep, she just gets 
wherever she wants. She doesn't care if I want her there or not. And over there, there's Paris. Look at her all sprawled out. She's on her back. She's so silly. She always sleeps like that. And then over here is Jewel sleeping. That's my chair. <laughs> right there. And then this one over here is Adam's. <laughs> but yeah, they're crazy, crazy animals, but I love them. Okay, back to crocheting. That was fun, right? <laughs> Seeing my little furry babies. Okay, so now that we chained three, um, we're not going to make any more increase rows. If you want to make this a bigger size, you can just use a bigger hook. Um, or you can make another row of increase if you'd like, but I'm going to stop here. This should fit um, a teenager slash adult, so because um, beanies usually are pretty tight fitting. So I'm going to stop here and I am not going to make increases. We're just going to put one double crochet in each stitch from here on end. And so I'm going to go right back into the space where I slip stitched and I'm going to make a double crochet. And then I'm just going to put one double crochet into each stitch from here on out, okay? Alrighty. Okay, so I'm at the end of row five, and I just wanted to remind you, don't forget about that tail from the magic circle that we made. I don't want you to forget to weave it in, and because uh, we're going to start getting sides here on the hat here in a little bit. And you might end up forgetting about that tail, and then when you wash the hat, it'll unravel. So don't forget about that tail. Um, go ahead and weave it in whenever you get a chance. Um, okay, so now we are going to change colors. So we're going to insert our hook, drop the brown, and we're going to pick up our white, leave a little bit of a tail, pull that white through as a slip stitch, okay? And then chain three, one, two, and three. And now we're going to make double crochets in all the stitches. We're going to do that for two rows. Go ahead and tug on that brown a little bit so it's not too loose. And on that white tail. And we're going to incorporate that tail as we go along. But we're going to put another double crochet right there in that space where we just slip stitched. Okay, now tug on that little tail. See, it kind of closes it up there and makes the brown and the white less visible of where you connected it. All right, incorporate your tail, just hold it there, and then just double crochet over it, and that way you won't have to weave in that white tail later. Okay, so just one double crochet in each stitch all the way around, and then we're going to come all the way back. We're going to slip stitch there, chain three, and we're going to do this one more row with the white, okay? So we're going to do two rows of white, and then we're going to pick up our brown and start doing our brown, but I'll be back at the end of this row. So I'm back, and now we are going to connect right here with the slip stitch, chain up three, and do the same thing. Put a double crochet into that same space, Yarn over and put one double crochet into each stitch, okay? Until we get all the way back around and then we're going to switch back to brown. Okay, so here I am at the end of my second row of the white and I'm going to insert my hook, but I'm going to drop the white and I'm going to pick up the brown And I'm going to slip stitch with the brown, okay? And then I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three. And now you can cut the white tail. And now let's continue. So let's go right back in here and make a double crochet. Okay, so just put one double crochet into each stitch around, okay? Alrighty. Incorporate that tail as you go along. Alright, so we're going to do this in the brown for 
I don't know, four rows or so. I'll let you know when I get back how many rows of the brown that I did. Alrighty, have fun. Okay, so I told you that I would let you know how many rows of brown that I did. I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but you might need less, you might need more, so try the hat on yourself or the person that you're making it for, um, but just keep in mind when you try it on that you still have two rows of white and one row of brown to do. So keep that in mind, okay, when you decide how many rows that you want to do. Okay, so now I am going to switch to the white, so I'm going to insert my hook, drop the brown, and grab the white, just like before. Leave yourself a little bit of a tail, and pull it through as you slip stitch that. Okay, I think I need more tail than that. Okay, and then chain up three, one, two, and three and tug on that white and on that brown to keep it nice and tight. Okay, and now once again I'm going to incorporate that white tail along with my stitches. Okay, so let's go right back into there where we just slip stitched and make a double crochet. Okay, and see that brown how it's showing? If you tug on that it'll kind of disappear, so make sure that's nice and taut. Okay, so now just go ahead and put one stitch, one double crochet in every stitch rather, and you're going to do this all the way around, and then when you get back around this way, you're going to slip stitch and you're going to make another row of white, and then I will meet you back there to join the brown with you. Okay. Have fun. So I'm done with the second row of white and so now I'm going to drop the white and pick up the brown and I'm going to insert my hook picking up the brown and slip stitching with that and then chain three. One, two, and three. And you see how loose that is? Tug on the white and then you can go ahead and trim that and you can incorporate that tail right now as we start with our brown. Okay, just keep it nice and taut though. Okay, and now let's insert our hook right into that same space and make another double crochet and we'll continue. <laughs> One row of brown is all that's left, okay? Um, I might do a row of single crochet at the end just to give it a better finishing little trim there but uh, I'll decide that by the time I come around alright don't forget to incorporate your tail okay so I'm finished and I decided that I am going to make a single crochet trim um, but I'm gonna do it I'm gonna single crochet very loosely so I chained one I did a slip stitch and then just chained one I am going to just very loosely single crochet in each stitch. Okay, the reason I say loosely is because this is a tighter stitch, so you don't want it to be too tight around the forehead. Okay, so I made it around. This is my last single crochet right there. So now I'm going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet that I made. Okay, and now chain one and then leave yourself a bit of a tail so you can weave that in but you're done your hat is finished we're just going to sew in the laces next okay but meanwhile let's go weave in this tail and the inner tail if you haven't already done that all right see you in a bit okay so here's the finished hat yay it's adorable i love it um and Here's the back, so we're going to go to the back and I'm going to show you how you cannot even see where the seam is. Isn't that awesome? Because we used those filler chains, so you can't even see any gaps or anything. So that is why I like to make those filler chains. And look at how nice and neat it looks on the inside. The only thing you see is where we carried the brown back up to start our new rows of brown. 
other than that it's a very clean looking hat on the inside isn't it very awesome <laughs> so yeah now we are going to to um, sew on the laces so I'm gonna have that as the back of my hat and I'm going to try to center this and make this the front okay so let's get our tapestry needle and some white yarn and we'll get started with the laces okay so I've got my needle threaded and I'm going to make the laces using doubled up yarn so I'm going to make a knot here okay and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm not going to use the top one and I'm not going to use the bottom one. I'm going to come in. So there's, there's the back right there. You see, and I'm going to try to come in about right here. I'm going to go in from underneath. I'm going to bring my needle up. Okay, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail because I think at the end I might tie a knot so that my laces don't come loose. So let's try to keep this straight and I will come in to here, right there, the top of that last row and pull down on this. Okay, so that's a nice little center lace there, and it's nice and straight. Okay, so now how do I want to do this? I don't want it to move. I don't remember how I did it in the past. In the past, when I had my craft show, my very first craft show, this was the very first item that ever sold. The craft show hadn't even started yet, and somebody walked by and saw this on my mannequin, and fell in love with it. So she says, can I just buy it now? And I said, well, sure. So, <laughs> so I sold my first piece before um, the craft show even started. So I'm gonna tie a knot right here, very loose knot, so that it doesn't come apart on me. Okay, just inside there. Okay, on this line, see the, the little divot from our rose? I'm going to not go into this one next to it. I'm going to go into the next one. You know what? I'm going to work my way. Where am I? Am I closer to the middle or am I closer to the end? Let me bring the knot. See how I've got the knot over here? I brought the knot closer to the top so that I'll be working this way and work my way down. Okay. So I'm going to do that and then not go into that one, but go into this next one and pull that through. Okay. So that's pretty much all we're doing. Just go ahead and do that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going from underneath. I'm going to come up through here, right there. I'm going to go from there let's follow this down and go in right here and not twist your yarn like I just did try to keep it nice and even so there's that and now come down to the next row right here and then follow to over here you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing right <laughs> all right see that's really cool okay now come over here and this is our last lace right there there see that's awesome now on the inside let's figure out how we're gonna do this <laughs> so I think I'll weave my way up here without coming through the other side of the hat. 
You don't want to pull too tight. My cat keeps grabbing my yarn, so I, she keeps messing me up. Okay, and now, right here, I think I'm... Hashtag, stop it. Stop, go away. Okay, so right here, I'm going to make another knot right there, and that will be it. right there. Maybe I'll do it one more time just to make doubly sure. Okay, and then I might weave it in a couple times just to make sure it's not going anywhere. Alrighty, now let's just cut it. And that's it. We are done. Okay, there it is. Yay, we did it. <laughs> I love it. Don't you love it? I'm going to wear mine, that's for sure. I'm going to wear this one um, as soon as it starts getting colder. So let me know how you liked this tutorial. I would love to see pictures of your hat. So go to my Facebook page at either Made With Love by Glamour and you can... Um, post a picture there or you can join one of my groups. I've got two um, Facebook groups. One is Ladies and Gents Crochet Show and Tell Happy Hour. The other one is Glamour's All Crafts Show and Tell Circle. Okay, so either one of those groups or on my Made with Love by Glamour Facebook page, you can go and post a picture and I would love to see your hat. Especially, I would love to see who you made it for and see them wearing it. Alrighty guys, I love you. Bye. <coughs> We're done. Go Hawks.